Hello and welcome to the fifth session and the last session of molecular biology that is gene regulation. So in gene regulation we are going to see both because you are having in the syllabus both prokaryotic uh, gene regulation in detail and eukaryotic gene regulation in brief. So first we will discuss prokaryotic gene regulation which will be followed by uh, the eukaryotic uh, gene regulation. Uh, so the uh, so in uh, Prokaryotic gene regulation, the key uh, key points that we are going to discuss is uh, the important terminologies that are uh, that usually come across uh, an operon or gene regulation in uh, prokaryotes, uh, which is followed by the LAC operon and the features and the uh, controlling points of LAC operon, followed by the tryptophan operon. There are two operons which are to be uh, which are given in detail in the syllabus. And after this session, we after this uh, LAC operon and TRP operon or tryptophan operon, we will be discussing uh, the uh, eukaryotic gene regulation. So first, we'll move on to uh, the key points or what is an operon or how uh, gene regulation occurs or what is the need for gene regulation. Uh, so gene regulation in both prokaryote and uh, eukaryotes is um, uh, is meant for something which is uh, nothing but regulating the process. So why this process is to be regulated or why a gene is to be regulated. So in the previous sessions, we saw that uh, from a gene, uh, mRNA is produced and that will be transcribed into a protein. So this particular pr uh, process, a protein is being produced. So in a cell, a protein is, uh, uh, many of the proteins is not required every time in a cell. There are some proteins which are required uh, every time in a cell and such genes, they do not have any regulation uh, or they will have a limited uh, regulation, they will be expressed uh, every time in the cells that means their mRNA will be seen uh, every time in the cell so there are a category of uh, proteins or a category of genes in both prokaryotes as well as uh, eukaryotes which are usually said to be uh, produced constitutively that is a term which is used for the genes which are uh, which are always uh, switched on switched on means that gene will be always producing mRNA and it will be always that protein will be uh, seen every time in a cell so there are a set of genes which are uh, constitutively expressed in every cell and there are uh, the majority of the genes in uh, every cell in both prokaryotes as well as eukaryotes they are regulated in the sense that uh, their mRNA and that and their protein is produced in the cell only when needed so how this occurs that is uh, what is the stimulation for the need and uh, what uh, does the cell do when that particular process is completed and uh, how the cell is switching off the gene. So switch on and switch off of a particular gene is called as uh, gene regulation. That means uh, not constitutively expressed gene, the other genes whereby for example uh, if you uh, take the case of a particular enzyme in our body which is a lipase. So lipase is a digestive enzyme and that uh, lipase is not produced every time in our digestive system. Whenever there is, uh, whenever there is uh, fat or lipid in our food, this particular uh, lipase will act. Other time lipase is not produced by the uh, digestive cells. So the, the production of lipase is controlled. That means only when lipid is present, lipases, uh, lipases or that particular enzyme. Enzyme means it is a protein that is being produced. Uh, so this particular, so that was an example uh, of how or what is the regulation. That means uh, when the substrate is present, that particular enzyme should be present. Or, that means only when the substrate is present, the enzyme should be produced by the cell because cell does not have anything to be wasted or cell does not do anything to be wasted or anything that goes to wastage. So uh, in uh, the processes in, in a cell is uh, many, most of the processes inside the cell is tightly regulated in the sense that it uh, will be, uh, it will be producing that particular protein on the enzyme only when needed. And after that need, that production of the protein will be switched off. So this switch on and switch off process is what is called as a regulation, which is applicable for both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. 
So coming to uh, prokaryotic gene uh, regulation, uh, prokaryotic mRNAs or prokaryotic genes, they are seen in the form of a string. That means uh, after one gene, the other gene will be present uh, in the form or in a continuous manner. That means uh, one gene after the other you can see. So these genes which are seen together, uh, the genes which are seen in a cluster or genes which are seen together, uh, they usually will be controlling a particular uh, pathway or they will be having a common function etc. So such genes are seen together in a prokaryotic uh, in a prokaryotic uh, DNA and such cluster of genes are called as operons. So these operons are seen only in prokaryotes. In eukaryotes, in eukaryotes such a situation is not present because in uh, eukaryotes every gene is separate. In your chromosome, gene one is separated from gene two with a uh, with a, a separation of something which is called as a junk DNA. Uh, but in the case of prokaryotes, you can see that uh, many genes which uh, either they might be controlling a particular pathway. For example, uh, the metabolism of a particular uh, thing, for example, lactose, which we are going to see. So the enzymes which are involved in the metabolic pathway of lactose will be seen uh, together in a cluster. That means one after the other. The genes will be present in the DNA and such clusters of genes are usually uh, referred to as operon and uh, the significance of uh, such operons is that these genes can be controlled uh, the, they can be controlled together that uh, they can be controlled in that means switch on of one uh, one of the gene can cause the other to switch on switch off of that particular gene can cause of one gene can cause switch off of the other so that is uh, what is called as a coordinated control that means if you control one the other will be switched on if you switch off one the others will also be switched off so that is what is called as a coordinated control so this clusters of uh, genes in the dna which is only seen in uh, prokaryotes so coming to the components of a prokaryotic or a bacterial operon is that uh, you will have what is the first and foremost is the uh, structural genes. So structural genes are nothing but they encodes the enzymes or proteins for a particular metabolic pathway. So I put it here as enzymes because we are going to discuss a lac operon and tryptophan operon where uh, we will be discussing about the enzymes which is involved in their metabolic pathway. Uh, so. Uh, so it can also be proteins. So they encode enzymes or proteins which belong to a particular metabolic pathway. And uh, usually they lie adjacent to one another. That is why I said earlier they are seen in a cluster. As a result, when an mRNA is produced from that particular gene, that is when a transcription occurs for that particular gene, that mRNA will contain all the particular genes in the cluster. And hence they can be constitutively turned on or off or, or, or turning on one gene will uh, turn on all of all genes turning off does the same thing coming to the next one promoter which we have discussed in uh, transcription so promoter is a particular site in the dna which is seen uh, which is seen upstream of the uh, transcription start site. So it is a sequence of uh, DNA, uh, sequence that is seen in the DNA. And it is usually the site, as we discussed earlier, the site where the RNA polymerase binds for transcription. So we saw, we uh, discussed in detail about prokaryotic promoter, how the polymerase binds there, how the sigma factor helps, etc. So uh, the same promoter. So promoter is the site where the uh, RNA polymerase binds. Coming to another one which is called as an operator. So operator is also a region of uh, DNA which is mostly seen adjacent to the uh, promoter. Adjacent in the sense that usually this uh, operator region, so that is a sequence of a DNA uh, which is usually seen downstream of the promoter. So you, uh, we saw a promoter is a quite big region. Uh, in uh, Downstream of the promoter region before the uh, initiation site of transcription you can see a very small region which is called as an operator region and this operator region is a site for binding of a repressor protein so um, when a protein binds uh, at that particular downstream region of the promoter you can imagine when a protein is sitting over that particular region of the DNA even though your polymerase is present it cannot move that means 
uh, this operator region decides whether that particular RNA polymerase should transcribe the gene or not or should transcribe the operon or not so when so this particular uh, region is called as the operator which is the site for binding of a protein so when a protein is sitting over there the rna polymerase will not move down downstream so we said earlier the genes uh, are usually seen downstream of the promoter and uh, if a particular obstacle is there the rna polymerase will not move so this is a control point or the operator and the protein which binds to the operator is the control point or a regulatory point in uh, prokaryotic gene regulation coming to the uh, regulatory gene so this will be seen uh, again upstream of the promoter upstream of the promoter region uh, and this encodes a protein which is called as a repressor protein or a regulator protein so this repressor or the regulator protein is the one which is going and binding to the operator and controlling uh, whether rna polymerase should move uh, and transcribe the gene or not and coming to some other uh, two uh, important terminologies which we'll be discussing further which is inducer and co-repressor inducer is a substance which is capable of binding with the repressor thus activating transcription that means what happens here is uh, when this particular inducer binds to the repressor it cannot bind to the uh, it cannot bind to the operator so the, there is no block for the rna polymerase hence transcription occurs I said earlier when there is a block block means whenever the repressor protein is binding to the operator RNA polymerase cannot move downstream and transcribe so this particular inducer is a substance which is binding to the repressor when an inducer binds to the repressor protein it cannot go and bind to the operator and hence transcription occurs that is why it is called as thus activating transcription that is why it is called as an inducer because it is inducing transcription next one is co-repressor so from the term itself it is something which represses transcription so it is also a substance which is capable of binding with the repressor so the first uh, uh, the first substance was it is binding with the repressor and it is uh, inducing transcription the second one is it binds with the uh, repressor protein and inhibits transcription so we will see the uh, uh, both the examples which one is lac operon and the other one is a tryptophan operon uh, so this is about the terminologies that we are coming across uh, uh, the uh, bacterial operon so directly we'll move on to the lac operon or lactose operon so this gene as we said earlier it will be having all the components the structural genes the operator the promoter uh, the repressor the inducers etc so we'll see how this works so you can see the animation which is working uh, uh, which is working in the uh, uh, in the bottom of this particular slide so uh, this particular operon consists of three structural genes and these uh, the, because it is lactose operon and this is a particular operon uh, or uh, this is a particular operon where you have uh, you are having the genes which is going to metabolize lactose as you all know lactose is a disaccharide metabolizing lactose means it consists of two sugar which is monosaccharides that's why it is called as a disaccharide consists of glucose and galactose so what these enzymes does is one of the enzyme or in metabolism of this particular lactose it will break this uh, disaccharide into monosaccharide as glucose and galactose so, uh, so and uh, this is so this is what is called as a metabolism of uh, metabolic pathway of lactose and the uh, the, uh, the enzymes which you see the three enzyme which you see will be helping in this particular process of uh, metabolism so coming to the structural genes there are three structural genes which are designated as lac set lac uh, y and lac a in the order so uh, if you are counting downstream and if you see the diagram you can see from a promoter downstream first is lac z followed by lac y and lac a so lac z is nothing but beta galactosidase it is the one which is going to break the disaccharides into monosaccharide uh, the next one is lac y the enzyme is galactoside permease so from the name itself permease which makes the membrane of the bacteria permeable so that means it uh, it is controlling or it is opening up channels uh, which will uh, make more and more lactose to enter into the uh, 
whenever this particular uh, operon is on it will induce or it will cause uh, the lactose channels on the membrane of the uh, on the cytoplasmic membrane of the bacteria or the plasma membrane of the bacteria to open and more and more lactose to enter and the next one is lac uh, uh, the uh, genus lac a which is thiogalactoside transacetylase and uh, till now the function of this enzyme in the metabolic pathway is unclear so these are the three enzymes which are uh, coming under the uh, lac operon the three structural genes so now we are going to see uh, what will happen in the presence of lactose and what will happen in the absence of lactose so this is how we are going to see the particular regulation so two things you will see how this particular operon is switching on the switching on means nothing but the mrna is being transcribed or the genes are being transcribed and switching off means uh, the process will be inhibited uh, so uh, lac operon as i said earlier it is it is concerned with lactose metabolism that means in bacteria bacteria obtain this nutrients from its uh, surrounding medium so whenever lactose is present in the medium uh, this particular uh, operon should be switched on and when lactose is absent this should be switched off so uh, we'll see the two situations so first situation we'll take it as uh, what uh, is happening in for the operon when uh, lactose is absent so uh, that is what is seen in the diagram uh, or the particular image which is seen towards the left side of this particular uh, slide so when lactose is absent uh, the regulatory gene uh, the regulatory gene is a constitutively uh, constitutive uh, a gene which produces the protein always which is a repressor protein so regulatory gene is producing the repressor protein and because there is no lactose uh, it goes and binds to the operator and inhibits transcription of the structural genes so uh, as i said earlier whenever repressor protein is present in the operator the rna polymerase cannot move downstream as a result there is no transcription coming to the uh, second situation when lactose is present when lactose is present uh, in the cell what lactose does is we said earlier uh, the term which is called as an inducer lactose is an example of an inducer so what lactose does here is lactose binds to the repressor uh, that means when the uh, repressor proteins are being produced or repressor proteins which are present inside the bacterial cell when lactose enter into the cell lactose moves and binds to these repressor protein and uh, when this uh, lactose binds to the repressor protein uh, the pr uh, repressor protein structure uh, structural deformity occurs and uh, scientifically the structural deformity is called as a conformational change in the protein so when the protein structure changes it cannot bind to the operator region so when lactose binds to the repressor uh, it cannot bind to the uh, it cannot bind so that is uh, what is shown here so so the first case is shown here that means uh, lactose is absent and hence you can see the repressor binds to the operator and there is no transcription so this is your rna polymerase here it is it cannot bind to the uh, promoter region and induce transcription but in the second set you can see here uh, this particular thing is nothing but the uh, rep uh, repressor protein uh, lactose complex in such a th or such a thing cannot uh, bind here as a result you can see more and more mrnas are being transcribed that means rna polymerase uh, uh, binds here it transcribes uh, the particular gene uh, particular genes or the particular operons and their mrnas the three genes mrnas are being produced they will be translated into the protein the enzymes will be pro uh, produced uh, the three enzymes does their functions does their function inside the bacterial cell uh, so here uh, this particular operon is also called as an inducible operon uh, because the repressor is able to bind to the operator only when the inducer is absent or when lactose is absent only when lactose is absent the uh, repressor protein goes and bind to the uh, bind to the uh, uh, operator gene and uh, represses transcription when the inducer is present when lactose is present or when lactose is present it is inducing the uh, process of transcription of uh, the lactose metabolizing gene and hence this is called as this particular operon is also called as an inducible operon 
so uh, you might be thinking what will happen when this mrnas are produced and uh, mrnas are being produced and they are translated into the protein or the enzymes so uh, when more and more enzymes are being produced the lactose will be getting degraded they will be producing or they will be um, uh, converting the lactose into its uh, monosaccharide so when every lactose uh, are being is being degraded uh it moves to the next thing because uh, when all lactose are degraded uh we are moving to the next situation which is switch off that is lactose is absent repressor uh, does not have the inducer in it it's free to bind to the operator it's switch off the gene so that's uh, that's what is happening in this particular cycle of events Uh, so this is another uh, picture which is showing this you can see uh, when uh, lactose which is shown as a disaccharide binds uh, now repressor cannot bind the rna polymerase is moving forward mrna is produced so uh, enzymes after it is getting degraded uh, the same uh, reversal occurs so this is uh, with lac operon and now coming to uh, another thing which is uh, usually asked as a question which is uh, positive control by uh, cyclic amp or camp and catabolite uh, repression so lac operon is positively regulated by a complex which is called as uh, cyclic amp crp complex it was found that when this complex or when the camp or when this complex is lacking uh transcription uh, does not occur uh, does not occur so favorably that means your rna polymerase even though uh, the repressor uh, lactose is present uh, the repressor protein is not there in the operator then also the uh, if uh, in the absence of this particular complex that is cyclic amp crp complex Uh, the rna polymerase moves very slowly over the operon and hence uh, the number of mrnas produced will be very less uh, so uh, in normal situations what happens is that this particular complex that is the camp crp complex is the one uh, which is stimulating the rna polymerase or which is a stimulator or an activator for the rna polymerase to move on and transcribe more and more mrnas so what happens here is in the presence of the complex transcription occurs very efficiently uh, and when glucose and lactose is present in the medium bacteria usually prefers glucose inhibiting lac operon in the presence of lactose so uh, take this particular situation that means when the media is containing both glucose and lactose so uh, as uh, we discussed earlier whenever lactose is present in the medium the lac operon should be active and then lactose should be used by the bacteria so this does not happen in bacteria when these two sugars are present simultaneously that is when glucose and lactose are present at the same time we uh, our discussion our previous discussion was uh, was uh, concerned mainly when uh, lactose only is present so now uh, is the situation when two sugars are present glucose a simple sugar monosaccharide glucose and lactose Uh, when uh, lactose is present uh, or when this particular glucose and lactose are present in the medium at the same time uh, bacteria will be uh, using glucose so it's okay uh, so uh, another thing occurs simultaneously with that is uh, the lac operon will be inhibited so how lac operon is inhibited in the presence of lactose so this is uh, what is called as uh, a glucose effect so glucose effect is nothing but whenever glucose is present in the inside the bacterial cell in the uh, in uh, when uh, together with the lactose what glucose does is glucose lowers the amount of camp so how glucose is lowering the amount of camp is still unknown but it was found that uh, when glucose is given to the cell uh, or bacterial cell in addition with the lactose it was found that the concentration of camp inside the bacterial cell reduces drastically and as we said earlier because it is a positive uh, stimulator for our rna polymerase uh, to or uh, for the lac operon to uh, produce the mrna what happens is that when camp concentration decreases gradually camp crp complex uh, does not form 
and when that is not pres uh, present as we said earlier uh, the transcription of lac operon uh, does not occur that efficiently uh, so this is the relation between glucose and cmp that means whenever glucose is present uh, the level of cmp is decreased and it is because of this low level of cmp our uh, transcription of lac operon is inactivated because when lactose is present your repressor does not bind because they form a complex there and repressor does not bind so there was a question uh, how this lactose uh, lac operon is being inhibited even in the presence of lactose the reason was this uh, for lac operon a positive inducer or a positive stimulator or an activator was required which is our CAMP uh, CRP complex and when glucose is present, this level of CAMP uh, gradually decreases. The complex is not being formed. That is why uh, lac operon uh, stands inhibited even in the presence of lactose when glucose is present. So this uh, CAMP, uh, CRP, uh, CRP is its receptor. That is CAMP uh, receptor protein is CRP. CAMP receptor protein. That is what is CRP. This complex binds to the operon and bends the DNA uh, and it becomes more accessible to the polymerase. That is what is done by this complex. That means it will uh, slightly bend the DNA because it might be uh, uh, you know, in the coil form. So it will bend the DNA uh, and um, it makes the RNA polymerase more accessible as a result. Uh, transcription occurs more efficiently in the presence of this complex. In the absence of this complex, transcription occurs at a very low rate. And now coming to the next point, which is usually asked as a question, catabolite repression. So coming to the term catabolite. So catabolite is nothing but uh, a substance which is formed or uh, formed after the metabolism of a particular substrate. So in lac operon, as we said earlier, the substrate is our lactose and its catabolite is because it is a disaccharide. Uh, uh, as we said earlier, when it is metabolized, it produces two sugars, la uh, glucose as well as galactose. So here uh, in our uh, discussion in this particular positive uh, control etc, we saw that uh, glucose which is one of the catabolite of lactose, that means when cat lactose is uh, uh, breaking down into glucose and galactose, uh, the catabolite of lactose is repressing lac operon. Is that clear? So a catabolite of a particular substrate, that means uh, the catabolite of lactose, which is glucose, is inhibiting lac operon by decreasing the amount of CAMP. So when a catabolite is a repressing a operon or when a catabolite is inhibiting an operon, uh, such a process is usually referred to as catabolite repression. Uh, please keep in mind because this catabolite repression is usually asked as a question for the exam. In most of the exam, you can see this terminology as catabolite expression, uh, uh, catabolite repression. Uh, if I... Uh, spelled it uh, wrong um, uh, make it clear it is catabolite repression where uh, a catabolite of uh, lactose is inhibiting the operon so here the uh, catabolite is glucose it is inhibiting by decreasing the concentration of cyclic amp in the cell how it decreases is still unclear so this particular uh, relation or this particular decrease or inhibiting lac operon by glucose is called as catabolite repression uh, so with this we come to the end of lac operon. So we'll discuss uh, tryptophan operon next uh, and our uh, eukaryotic gene regulation in the uh, next video. Thank you.